Well, uh, Olina Guinness is currently in Kyiv with her three children. Her husband is a journalist who has joined the Ukrainian Defence Forces. She's been calling on people to put pressure on governments to take action, and she's been documenting her experience on her YouTube channel, What is Ukraine? So, today I visited, uh, I rushed to our home, <laughs> which was very nice. <laughs> I spent some time over there to collect all the products that they had. Uh, not in the fridge, obviously, but, you know, just some porridge like this. Uh, some more of the clothes, some blankets for children. And I even took some toys for them. And uh, Olina joins us now from uh, Kiev. Thank you so much for talking to us today, Olina. And how are you? How are your children, first of all? Hello, thank you for asking. We are basically fine each morning when we wake up after the night and we are still alive. We say that we are we are fine. And thanks to our army that protects us. And thank you for the morning. And Kaita wanted to say that we are always angry. She is very angry. <laughs> yeah. She wanted to show how angry she is with what Putin is doing because he wants she wants to come back home, wants to come back to school oh. and want to come back to normal life. Yeah, and I think we can we can definitely see her angry expression. She's just seven, am I right? You've got a seven-year-old, a five-year-old, and, and your baby is five months. Am I right on that? Yes, yes. Uh, how are they? How are they coping? I mean, what sort of questions are they asking uh, the the five and seven-year-old? Because you've had a, a pretty sleepless night, I presume, woken up if you ever got to sleep in the first place by those explosions in the capital overnight. Uh, what are you saying to the children? I'm saying the truth, what's really happening. Uh, it's you know too hard to, to pretend that yeah. nothing is happening. So I decided that for them, it's, it's better to know the truth. So yeah. they know where their father is, that he joins the defense units over there. Uh, they know that we are hiding in the shelter from the bombs. They know that we can go outside only when there is no air siren on and we should be somewhere close to some shelters. And I explained them how to, uh, like lie on the ground, cover your hand, your head with your hands in case if you hear the explosion. We know where are the safest places for us to be. I just want them to be prepared for survival because the situation is serious. And I'm really shocked how, how fast they really understood and realized what is happening. They already understood, yes. And uh, they grew up very, very fast. But unfortunately, the situation, of course, is taking their childhood away. Yeah, much too, much too young to be to be thinking and learning about this, but the situation demands it, Olena. Uh, when was the last time that any of you were outside? So yesterday, yesterday we, for the first time together, went back home uh, to our apartment. It is on the eighth floor in an old Soviet-like panel apartment block. Uh, which is very unstable and very old. So it's really, I, I really feel not comfortable to be there at home. Uh, but we had, you know, to take a shower, to change some clothes, to take. We already took away all the products from our apartment to here, to the shelter. Uh, and, uh, you know, when I was coming back to the shelter, I just said, let's go back home. So it feels like now our home is the shelter because we feel safer here than in our own apartment. And I do not wish anyone to experience this. How many people are there in that shelter with you? In the first days, there were about 300 people. Right now, I think it's about 70, something like this. Many people left uh, by cars and by trains. They have a ch had a chance to, to escape. Of course, it's anyway the risk to you know, drive somewhere to the west, it's equally dangerous. Uh, but uh, these people who stayed here right now in the shelter, these are people who decided to do so. Uh, and do you have any plans to leave? No, I do not have any plans to leave. The most complicated thing was to decide what to do, to leave or to stay. And uh, we stayed. And can you... Uh, I, Sorry. I think we can we can still hear you, Olena. I hope okay. uh, we'll give you, you a moment to, to fix the camera. We can't see you at the moment, but I hope that you can hear me. 
Yes, I can hear you. I'm sorry. This is children. We we understand the, these things happen when children are, are uh, I'm sure they're desperate to run, run around and burn off some energy rather than be stuck in a basement, uh, Elena. I think actually we may have lost Elena. We will try to come back to Elena to hear more of her story um, in that basement in Kiev uh, with her three young children. Uh, we have some breaking news now coming from the mayor of uh, Kyiv, uh, Vitaly Klitschko, who says the situation in Ukraine's capital is, quote, difficult but under control. Uh, Klitschko said there were no casualties overnight and that nighttime explosions were Ukrainian air defences taking down incoming Russian missiles. He said a heating system site damaged by Russian shelling on Wednesday would be fixed during the day. So the situation in Kyiv is difficult, but under control, according to the mayor of the city, uh, Vitaly Klitschko. That uh, news just coming in to us. And uh, we have Olina again now, Olina Ganes, in uh, that basement in the capital with her three young children. Alina, good to have you back with us. Um, I was just about to ask you when we lost contact, uh, talk us through your decision to stay in Kyiv rather than make the decision to leave. This is my home and uh, I have a cat at home. Uh, and uh, I just feel that I need to stay here where I am. Uh, it was a complicated decision for us that we took with my husband. And from time to time, I speak to the other people in the shelter, like, guys, why did not you leave? And uh, yeah, because this is our home and who is going to protect it if not us? You know, if every, everybody leaves, who is going to stay and protect the home? When was the last time you were able to speak to your husband, Olina? Well, we can message each other. We do it like one or two times per day. And for me, it's enough to know that uh, he is alive. That's the most important thing. I haven't seen him for one week. Uh, I know that he has an opportunity to come, that he's somewhere in Kiev and uh, probably very close to me. But I think he just doesn't want to come because it's too hard for him. And he just do not want to be you know, shaken by emotions. He wants to stay strong. And I'm trying not to tell him, <laughs> you know, to say that I'm just a kid and worry for us. Yeah, just for him to be strong. Olena, thank you so much for talking to us and uh, please stay safe, you and your children, the other people sheltering in the basement. Thank you so much, Olena Ganesh there.